Right, I think we're okay to start. Um, so let's get started. Oh, hi everyone, welcome to today's masterclass. Um, I'm Halima Latif, the Candidate Network Manager, and today we are delighted to be joined by the wonderful Samantha Clark, happiness consultant and change maker, who will be presenting today's session, The Joy of Work. Um, this session is being recorded um, so that I can share it with you after the event. Uh, we will also upload it onto our website so you can watch it in your own leisure. Um, feel free to use the chat box to introduce yourself and to ask any questions um, or you can come off mute. We will have a Q&A session at the end where you'll get that opportunity to sort of for us and back for Sam to um, answer your questions. Um, and for those of you, uh, for those of of you who are new to inclusive recruiting, we are we work with organizations that are trying to become inclusive and diverse in the workplace. We have a number of services that we provide to our clients. Um, and these include recruitment agency support alongside having a job support called inclusive hires. We also provide inclusive training and workshops and equity, diversity and inclusion consultancy services. So I hope that gives you a good snapshot of who we are and what we do. Um, and with that being said, I think Samantha, you can take the lead now. Brilliant, thank you so much. I am so excited to be here today to talk you through the joy of work. And I've basically broken it down into two sections, which I'll get to shortly. But before then, who am I? Uh, well, my name is Samantha Clark. I'm a happiness consultant and global change maker. And what that essentially means is I am on a mission to really support uh, people who want to make changes and become change makers to really think about their well-being, their intentionality and purpose in how they're working so they can go on and do great work in the world. And I've had the pleasure of sitting on panels with um, uh, the former US Secretary of State, Hillary Rodden Clinton and Angela Duckworth, really thinking about what it takes to be um, a great leader of self and others in this changing world. You can check that out on my website, samanthaand.co. I've written an incredible book called Love It or Leave It, How to Be Happy at Work. And I'll be infusing some of the elements from that book, um, but definitely worth you grabbing a copy to support you on your job journey. I do a lot of workshops. Um, uh, you can find me doing quite a few on Simon Sinek's uh, website um, on reducing stress and anxiety, thinking about how to build great cultures, um, thinking about how to navigate transition and change at work. And I've also done a TED talk on, um, are you ready to break up with work? Helping you find more purpose and meaning in the way that we approach our attitude to work. So I hope that um, that's given you a brief intro into me. Um, I have, I guess, two ways in which I support people. So one is helping them to make a change. So a lot of you are here today to really think about the next steps in your career, to find that new job or to settle into a new job. And being happy first is really about infusing elements that help you handle tricky situations think about your well-being and your productivity think about your mindset and um that is helping to support you make a change and then those who are leaders or managers um i also support people with the tools to know what it is to lead teams differently and to amplify and own your voice especially in a time where you might be remote working and feel like you're not getting the right um, connection with stakeholders or the rest of your team i've worked with some incredible companies so i'll be putting um some of the great advice uh, that i've shared with them i'll be sharing that with you today when i support uh, managers and leaders uh, through coaching and as I said, definitely grab a copy of Love It or Leave It, How to Be Happy at Work, paperback, audio, Kindle, all of that good stuff to really support you if you're on the cusp of identifying what's next for you at work. So as I said today, I'm going to be breaking down this journey into two parts. First, I'm going to be trying to ascertain where you are in the journey and giving you some tools depending on whether or not you are looking for a new job. So one thing I would love if, in the chat, if you could let me know, are you, um, have you been made redundant and you're looking for something new? 
Are you on the cusp of starting a new role? Are you just looking? It would be really great to know where you are. Um, so put this in the chat, where you are in your job journey, or maybe you are in a role and you're just looking for some tools on how to be more confident in the way that you're working. Um, we have done some you know, great discussions in terms of the content today, but I want to make sure that the examples I'm providing are really going to support you to grow to your next level. So let me know, are you lifting off into something new? Are you at a crossroads and maybe trying to find a new position or do you want more joy on the job? Uh, identifying ways for you to be happier in the day-to-day -day work. So feel free to put that into the chat box. Um, it's really helpful if we do have quite an interactive session. So um, let me know so that I can make sure that the examples that I'm sharing are supportive for you. So whilst you're doing that, I will go through each of um, what we call our fundamental pathways uh, for those who are in a kind of, you know, seeking to make a change in their role. So the first one is thinking about if you are in a setback uh, to lift off. So thank you, Lorraine, for putting that into the chat. So you're um, unemployed at the moment and you're looking for a new job. So when we generally have um, somebody who is in this uh, situation, it's kind of they've been facing a bit of a, a setback or they're uh, feeling like they're in a stretch of unemployment. Um, we generally work with candidates who might have been maybe made redundant or shifting opportunities, perhaps in a stretch of unemployment, or maybe they feel like they've had a setback in terms of missed opportunities, promotions or pay in the way that they're working and they're looking to kind of find the next stage. And what we do is to really help support you to think about the phase that you're in where you're at right now. So for, the, for uh, Lorraine, who is um, you know, unemployed, we start with uh, the purpose seeking stage. So working our way all the way through to thriving, which is hopefully where you have started your new position. And we think it's important for you to go through each of these phases and do key um, elements required for each phase to get you into the job that you are seeking. So it is moving through being a purpose seeker, explorer, that architect and fire starter stage, that's where we're starting to take action and getting into the thriver point. So what does that look like when you're at each form of elements or each uh, stage of your journey? So if you're at the purpose seeker, the core thing to do if you have been in unemployment for quite a while is really starting to address your emotions about the current state and really getting things straight with what is it that I want? Um, how do I really start to navigate my confidence and start to build and boost my mindset around getting back into the job landscape? And this purpose seeking space is where we start to really identify and crystallize your brand. It's really important, um, especially Lorraine, if you are thinking about this next job is to get into the mindset of who do I want to become in this next position? What's the person I'd like to step into? What goals am I envisioning for myself in this new role? And how do I start to really crystallize what that brand is and how I'm going to show up effectively? Thanks to more of you who are entering into the chats. We've got Abby starting a fixed contact role soon and on the lookout for something a bit more long term. Natasha, identify tools that I can use to build my confidence at work and recognize where I can elevate my skills to progress. Um, Sophia, I'm on a roll, but I'd love to learn how to be more confident. And Catherine, um, made redundant last month and looking for new opportunity in talks with a company, but still negotiating the specifics. So great. So there'll be elements that I'll be teasing out for each of you who are at different stages. So, um, so I guess Catherine and Lorraine, this is quite pertinent for you, is really crystallizing what do I want for this new phase as I move into um, the new roles that I'm starting to look for? Um, great, uh, Mihak. We'll be looking at the 30, 60, 90 day. What are the key things we need to do to start confidently in a new role? That's going to be the second half of the presentation. So once you've started to really crystallize what it is that you're looking for, we move into that action, um, that action stage, that architect and fire starter. So it's really cultivating 
in the job search, how do I ascertain the types of companies I want to look for? How can I get very proactive at maybe pitching myself in, doing the investigative work versus just maybe looking on a jobs board and hoping that the right role that you're looking for comes up? It is about stepping into that space of honoring and, and really uh, questioning what it is that I'm looking for. Can you start interviewing people in roles that you aspire to step into? What is it like working in the job? What's the culture of this company? Getting to befriend HR and talent recruiters as well. And then so that you can move into a place where you are starting a new role. We then talk about an individual who might be at a crossroads and thinking, what is next for me in terms of my career? So maybe Catherine, this is where you're sitting, is thinking, okay, what do I want to kind of step into that's new? This new company, are they really crafting uh, a place for me to feel settled and you know feel like I'm going to be able to grow there? And so the key thing that I think is really important if you are at a crossroads and you are looking to identify which job to take next, and also this will be um, useful for Abby as well, if you are in a place right now and you're, uh, you've got a fixed contract, but you're looking for something more long term, it's identifying what is it you want from that pivot. Is it an, a job? Is it something that is just going to support you, create that bread and butter money? Are you looking for a career? Are you looking to see what the trajectory is for you in that particular company? Where do you see yourself fitting in? Do you want uh, the boss's job? Are you really interested in, in climbing the ladder? Are you looking for a calling? And it might be that you are piecing together different job roles that could be, um, you know, not formalized, or maybe it's you pitching in ideas to a company and noticing where the gaps might be in what they already offer. And when you enter into that explorer stage, it is about addressing some of the challenges that might lie ahead, depending on the path that you choose. So noticing which uh, areas of companies are growing and scaling really quickly. What does that mean in terms of the transformation of the teams? Um, are, has a company gone through a period of mass attrition and they've lost lots of people? Does it, what does that say about the culture? really using this time to define what does the next long-term position look like for me and how do I ascertain across the job role, across the people, across the culture and really vocalizing the change that you're looking for. So getting clear on your brand, getting clear on your strengths, getting clear on how you want to grow and why you want to grow in a specific way. And I think the best way to take action here is to really start to look at your CV uh, a good exercise that I often do with my clients is for them to notice over the past couple of years, which experiences with people, um, the job role and the environment, did they see themselves flourishing? What was it that they were doing? Who were they interacting with? What are the kinds of um, projects they were involved in? And then also doing the converse of that. Where did they see themselves flatlining? Um, how do they start to notice the types of environments that maybe triggered more stress or gave them imposter syndrome? If we can be really reflective on the types of uh, scenarios and career situations we found ourselves in and that we want more of, we can then be very specific about that as we go to interview, as we cultivate our CV and really make it primed for the environment we want to step into. And that also takes you doing the research on the company, um, you know, whittling down, maybe you have your top five list of companies you'd like to get into. What's the departments there? What are the, the challenges that they face? What key skills are they looking for? Where are the gaps that you can really fill? And knowing how you sell yourself in. But it is very critical to notice, what am I looking for? Is it a job, a career, or a calling? And that will really help you to kind of focus on the next role that you find yourself in. And I think the last, um, I guess, uh, framework that we look at is supporting people who want more joy in the job. So, you know, Natasha, you've talked about how to be more confident at work and realize where you could elevate yourself. Um, Sophia, you've also said the same. And, you know, Mihak as well. It's thinking, how do I get into a space of being um, 
more motivated, honoring my voice, knowing how to look after myself. And I think for some people, they want more joy in the job because either they loving what they do, but there's a bit of a thorn in the side in the way that they're working. Maybe they want to look at how they can build stronger relationships. Maybe it's to do with the mental well-being and creating more rituals and routines. And so we often say that, again, you need to go through this cycle and really think, you know, what is the purpose of how um, boosting my confidence will support me in my role? What are the things that I need to explore about my, my existing toolkit? Do I lack confidence when perhaps I am uh, not able to have the strengths or the skills required to execute on a project? Am I fearful about connecting with new people? Um, do I not feel seen and heard because I'm working remotely? Am I able to share my thoughts in meetings? It's really starting to galvanize what's not working and where do we need to fix that? And so I, I always um, ask people to really question what is making you not so confident at work? Is it what internal issues are going on for you? Is it the inner critic? Um, I was doing a coaching session with someone today and she said, you know, what, what I have is an overbearing um, concern that the new company I'm in, I'm going to see some of the old issues that I had from my past company. And so it's almost like I am um, almost belittling myself or preempting arguments that haven't even existed. And so we really have to question what makes us un, um, unconfident? Is it that we, we don't know the material? Is it that we are um, struggling to communicate with people who have a different communication style to us? Is it that we are lonely because we are working from home and actually we work better in teams? Um, is it that we are still finding our feet in the role and we don't know how to pitch in new ideas? So really start boosting your confidence. I, I would love it if you could, you know, take a moment and evaluate your toolkit. And that's uh, chapter five in the book is very um, rich in exercises to support you to think about what are your strengths? So owning your top five strengths, are you a great uh, communicator? Do you know how to collaborate well with others? Are you somebody who can influence on projects? And honing and refining your strengths will really support you in your confidence. Also keeping an achievement diary. You know, as I start off in this new role, when I look back at my previous roles, where am I starting to see um, me building in confidence? What things have I managed to execute this week and deliver on? What projects have I succeeded in? Which relationships are continuing to flourish? The more that you can be confident about noting down the areas of achievements, whether they're big or small, just daily or weekly, you'll get into this habit of noticing where you're progressing and your brain really loves it when we kind of repeat success and we can get into a cycle and a habit of knowing what works. This self-reflective piece is gonna be really powerful for you to boost your confidence. And then also to be able to share that with your line manager. This is how I've improved this week. These are the kinds of things that I've been able to deliver on. These are some of the areas I'm researching that I'd like to test and trial um, in the future. The more that you can articulate that, this helps you to kind of one, uh, you know, present well to your line manager show that you are confident and that you're picking up momentum in the job. And also it doesn't leave you with that pressure to kind of keep selling yourself in when you have your performance review. You would have already been layering up your successes through these very brief informal chats. It's also important to really think about how you manage your mindset and your body throughout the working day. It's hard right now when we're all working from home and the day kind of feels like it's blurring into one. Start to think about, am I nourishing my body well? Am I sleeping effectively? What do I need in terms of food to make sure that I am managing my energy levels throughout the working day? I just did a great LinkedIn Live on this. So I'd encourage you to check it out um, where I talk about energy and its impact on your confidence, where I talk about your attention and really honoring your um, biorhythms to know when you work well and when you don't and also how you can harness the difference between deep attention tasks at work which 
require you to be strategic problem solving and the other kind of more um, closed attention tasks. And I think it is this constant uh, harmony and fine tuning of your mindset that supports your well-being at work, that supports you to be able to know what eats away at your confidence, what minimizes your voice, um, the things where you aren't able to really stand up in your own self-leadership. The more that we can get very conscious and aware of our habits, uh, where our inner critic belittles us, you know, start to challenge it. When your inner critic says you can't do that or you don't have the skills to apply for that job or, um, you know, how dare you think that, you know, you, you could apply for that, you don't tick the boxes, really interrogate what's coming up. Where is that little voice coming from? Often it's internalized voices that we've grew up with about where we can push ourselves. And sometimes it is us not really looking at it objectively. Okay, what are you here to teach me? Sometimes when I speak to my inner critic, I'm like, okay, are you here to help me uncover gaps that I haven't looked at? Uh, should I be a little bit more rational in my decision making? Or actually, is this something that I can just listen to and ignore? Because I know what I want and I know the, the pace in which I'm moving and how I'm going to execute. So sometimes you can just shut it down. But really be mindful of how am I taking care of my body, my mind and my spirit throughout my working day? Because that at a baseline will give you the willpower to execute more effectively on decisions and that helps you to boost your confidence. So when we think about those core areas, just in the chat, let me know where do you think you need to start first? If what you've been hearing, whether or not you're in setback to lift off, if you are at a crossroads and you're thinking about what's next, or if you're having a a, a time where you want more joy in the job, what might be an action that you would take right now, just in terms of what you've hearing, what you've been hearing so far? What's come up for you as I have shared that? Just let me know in the chat, what might be one thing you would try and do? Is it taking the time to really understand your personal brand and how you sell yourself in? Is it thinking about what are the moments where I feel less confident and how do I start to really understand and relate to what's happening in those moments that could be eating away at my confidence? Is it thinking about the role that you want next? You know, what is this new role that I'm applying for or that I'm hoping to be in long term? And what do I want to achieve in that goal? What's my goal? And for those of you starting new jobs, you know, what do I want to, or how do I want to be perceived as I start in this new role? So um, Lorraine, so next goal, uh, next role and it's goals. Yeah, so really be mindful, okay, about this, this next role that I want. What are the personal goals that I want for myself? What are my professional goals? And how do I intend to meet them over the next six months, nine months, 12 months? A great um, exercise I love to do with clients is to get them to think of it as a ladder. And at the top of your um, ladder is your, your ultimate goal. Maybe that goal is six months or 12 months away. And each rung of the ladder is a monthly goal that you need to hit. And the spaces between the rungs are your behaviors and practices every day that will support you to leading towards your monthly goal. So if at the end of six months or three months, you're thinking, I want to be in a new role in, I'm just picking hypothetically advertising. I want to be a new brand strategist. So what, think backwards. What do I need to do before then? Okay, so before then, it might be, you know, the, the interview. Uh, before then, it might be trying to connect with HR and going through the recruitment process. Before then, it might be starting to lay out what are the types of companies I want to work with? Who are the people in charge of recruiting there? How can I start to build relationships with them? And before then, it's like really getting your CV crafted and start to look at what behaviors, how do I keep myself confident on this journey so that I don't slip and I don't allow myself to get to the end of the month and realize I haven't connected with five or 10 HR managers or I haven't submitted the kinds of applications I want. 
So um, Abby, love the idea of the achievement diary. Brilliant. So it's just a two minute thing. When you wind down from your end of your day, what worked well? Um, where did I, what am I proud of achieving? Um, what are the things that I'd like to progress with tomorrow? And just having that check in with yourself is really powerful to notice, okay, I am doing well. Because often when we sit in these performance review meetings or people ask us to, to share, what are your greatest achievements? We can often be blank. And having this achievement diary really enables you to be up to speed with, I, I can do this. I know what I'm doing. I know what skills I'm building and I'm executing. And actually here are some of the gray fuzzy areas. That's where I need to lean into. Sophia, um, having a conversation with my inner critic and start considering whether those questions they raise might be helpful and not always negative. Exactly. So I just wanted to um, give you some insights on, on the first 90 days and thinking for those of you starting a new role, congratulations. I love that. You know, you are now in a new space where you are able to uh, excel to execute you've been given the role so they clearly have that uh, pride and awareness in what you can deliver but 90 days is really important for you to get in and cement yourself and embed yourself in that business and so the first 30 days are about you building your foundation it's starting to understand the company politics how things work how they make decisions how they handle conflict what the culture is building the key relationships and creating a really good first impression. And the way that we can start to think about this is what I call the four Ps. So it is getting to know the people. So be in that beginner's mindset where you are really encouraged to meet new people. I know if you are shy or if you are fearful and it's hard across um, digital platforms as well if you're not meeting members of your team in person but really be in that mindset of I'm just going to start something new today I'm going to reach out to somebody I'm going to introduce myself um, I love this quote when you are one person you're a star but when you're a manager if some of you are moving into leadership positions you are there to be star makers for others you are there to support people to shine so really notice where you might be holding back Take the time to get to know your team, take them out individually and um, yeah. you know, schedule time in with different leaders, people who you see have good leadership styles that you're interested in. And how do you create that first impression? It is a constant work in progress, but I think understanding the people is the first challenge. Then understanding the product of the business, the service, getting to really know that, what the company does, why they exist, who are they executing for, the more that you can enrich yourself in the customer service element or the end goal, it really helps you see where your role fits in. So you can understand the mission and see where you align, um, where there might even be potential differences that you need to work through. But this is really fundamental to you embedding yourself in the organization. Learning the process. It can be really humbling as well. I, you know, a friend of mine's just got a very senior role um, now at uh, a kind of clothing company. And she says, you know, I, I forget that I, I need to, to be open to learning again and, think, and also unlearning. And she's like, I'm still taking over processes that I used to do very well at De Beers that don't work here. And so it's unpacking your mindset around how things should be and learning what is and where your potential is to disrupt um, and make things a bit more efficient as well. But noticing um, the learning and unlearning journey you'll need to go through to see how things work and where there is a space for you to, to make changes, to show up and excel. And then personal. I think this one is crucial because the personal underpins it all. If you don't have that strong psychological basis, as in if you don't know what your purpose umbrella is, what your purpose and your goal is and your drive, you're likely to get swayed in different directions. Knowing your worth is another one. So really thinking about your money and your value. And hopefully you have started off on a salary that you feel happy about, but also a vision to where you want to get to. Mindset and well-being especially if you're starting a new role, you will be processing a hell of a lot more. So your brain really needs good nutrients, good food, good sleep, 
so that you can keep pace um, as you are starting a new role. Think about the portfolio of work that you're doing, the different skills that you'll need to learn and pick up and the ones that you need to strengthen. People in place, this is difficult because um, I think Catherine says, you know, gaining trust and uh, building that uh, remotely. People in place is a big one. And I think, you know, building trust is, it's leaning in, it's asking questions, it's being open, but it's also you being a little bit vulnerable. You know, I'm excited to be here. I'm new, I'm still learning. I'd love to learn a little bit more about you putting yourself out there. And yes, it is nerve wracking, especially if we're doing it digitally, but ask for some time offline. You know, can I have a call with you? Um, I'd love to take this off Slack and get to know you in a short call. Book in those calls over the process of your week so that you can start to get to know people. And when you are in the office, again, dedicate more time for that face to face. And systems and flow start to really look at when am I productive? When do I have a, a dip in the day and how do I arrange my tasks accordingly? 60 days, I think, is all about putting some of this theory into practice. So you've spent the first 30 days kind of foundation building and really starting to look at where do I build more of my developmental learning? Maybe you've realized that there are some, some gaps in your strengths. And it might be that you do a short course, it might be that you start to uh, lean into and find partnerships in the business who can, uh, that you can shadow or, or people that you can learn from, but it is really deep diving into um, your developmental learning and getting more hands on experience too. And noticing your areas of control. I think when you start, it can be quite easy to just take on everything but actually, fundamentally, the, the success will be when you start to realize, actually, this is an area that I can directly control, I've got direct impact on, and I've got direct um, influence. And actually, at the opposite end of the spectrum, I'm noticing that there are things that I can't shift, or I don't have the authority to yet, or I don't know how to make impact. And it's important to spend your energy in the areas that you can directly control. And maybe in the middle somewhere, there might be an element where you can create some impact and influence. But in order to make and get the quick wins, start with what you can control and influence and impact first. And this will require that you consistently do a SWOT analysis of what's going on, not only with your clients, where are the successes and the wins, um, and how do you think that your strengths will align to achieving more of the successes? Noticing the weaknesses, where might be some missed opportunities for growth? Where are the gaps that you need to bridge? Um, and how do you start to build those relationship connections to support you? What are the opportunities that you're seeing to hack the product, to hack the service, to offer your innovative ideas and solutions? Just because you're new doesn't mean that you can't make solutions and suggestions and really bring in your knowledge of the threats or the landscape that you can see the company in and how you can be an asset to them. And the 90 days is going to be just about you maintaining that momentum. So you know, if you're realizing that actually me becoming um, a manager for the first time is proving difficult, then find the books, look at the industry articles, get some podcasts. Blinkist is a great way of consuming books very quickly um, in a short space of time. Also notice how can you start to prioritize your goals and your actions to achieve your first win. And it is about applying that 80 to 20% rule. What are the outcomes that I can do with like 20% of that effort? What are the factors? Now I should be in a groove noticing what's working, what isn't, where my attention really needs to be focused um, to achieve the great outputs that I desire. And notice where you might end up people pleasing, where you might try to do the dance to try and accommodate everybody, but actually that's not helping to take you towards your core goals. So notice what creeps up when you're maybe putting other people's priorities ahead of what really needs to be in your wheelhouse first. And, you know, it is about 
understanding your important matrix. What are some of the key, urgent, important things that need to be met? And what's not urgent and not important? You know, noticing this is what's going to keep you um, really laser focused in your first 90 days on the job to execute and be strategic and deliver in a way that will stand you in good stead long term. So noticing where am I getting affected by um, low attention activities and I'm making them a priority versus the top level things, because it can be easy to fall into firefighting mode and not really deliver on what it is that you need to. So try and get your first accomplishment in by noticing how am I dividing out my time? How am I focusing on what's important and what's urgent? And this helps you to reaffirm your appointment. It lifts other people's morale, it lifts your morale and identify what might be my first win in the 90 days that I'd like to accomplish. What would I like to secure, whether it's a new client deal, whether it is uh, implementing new ideas, whether it is hiring new people, whatever your goal is that you set for yourself, really work towards achieving that in your first 90 days. So that's all I have uh, to share in terms of thoughts. I know that we have some time for Q&A. If you are interested in learning more about each of those different stages, whether it is um, creating more joy in the job or helping you to move from a setback into liftoff, or if you are at a crossroads, definitely check out loveitleaveit.co. We have our Lily shop with some really interesting and uh, informative bite-sized workshops that will support you to make each of those pivots and also help you with the first 90 days on the job. I think there are a few questions in the chat that I'll go back to, but if you do have any questions, I would love to hear them um, and answer them for you. Feel free to come off mute or you can put them in the chat box, but hopefully that's given you some insight into how to create more joy in the way that you're working, but also to give you that energy and boost to find a new role. Um, so Natasha says, I think I need to recognize my purpose and check in with what's making me not feel confident first. I find it difficult at times expressing my ideas to colleagues. So maybe this is an area I need to lean into. So yeah, Natasha, really notice, um, in the book I talk about different communication styles. So it's noticing, do you have, is there a breakdown in how you're communicating to others and what they're actually hearing? And that can often make us feel um, unconfident because we feel like we're sharing our great ideas and we're wondering why they don't get it. But if we're dealing with someone who has more of a commander communication style, this person is speaking in uh, or thinking in um, end results. They're thinking in a very process oriented way. They're thinking about the steps that they can take to achieve excellence. If you're not talking in that language, it can get lost versus speaking to somebody who is a bit more of a navigator in the office and they are more likely to speak in terms of relationship building and wanna build a rapport with you before getting into the nitty gritty, probably less small detail focused, more bigger picture focused. And that way, when you express your ideas, if we know how to tailor it to the audience, we can um, get more cut through and then feel more confidence leaning into if you know, actually, when I'm speaking to this person and I approach my idea with more facts and figures, a bit more of a logical focus, a bit more attention to detail, they'll get it. I hope that makes sense. Do we have any questions? Feel free to come off mute or you can put them in the chat. Brilliant, I'm glad. Um, I was just saying that was amazing, Samantha. I mean, there's so much information there that I think one needs to really go away and sort of digest and um, really think about it. That's really, that was a really great uh, masterclass there. Yeah, I mean, definitely you'll have the recording so you can go through and work through each of the sessions. And like I said, we've got little mini bite-sized classes that go deeper with each of those sections if 
if you feel like actually I do need some help thinking about how I understand my purpose and my brand, or maybe I want to delve a little bit deeper into my action steps in my first 30, 60, 90 days, check out those um, courses or definitely come and find me on LinkedIn. I share a lot of videos on well-being at work and um, helping you find purpose and, and to kind of be intentional in how you're working.